and um, welcome to a updated review slash look around of my office slash workroom slash holy cow what the hell is going on why do I see five monitors there should technically be six but the other monitor died um, which I got from my friend uh, Otto thank you Otto but uh, I finally got my editing rig back up and running there she is with all her red glowy rammy goodness and fingers crossed knock on wood today I should be getting my capture card which means my editing rig uh, which is a Q66 uh, it's an Intel Q66 with a mild overclock She's on air calling right now. She used to be water cool. Hence the block here. Now the reason why there's barbs missing, I'll explain. Um, and what I plan on doing, I've also ordered a new, um, new water block from my gaming computer. But I wanna say a big shout out to PC callings here on eBay. I want to thank them personally for selling me that beautiful little pump res combo. Downside was it came with these pissant tiny little barbs. I do three eighths for your heart, trust me. I ain't no short barbed man. If you're a fan of the 90s, you'll know what that means. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm in the process of swapping over all my barbs. But unfortunately, I am on a fixed income, which means uh, I'm tapped out for the rest of this month. So unless I get a donation on my stream to buy the barbs, I kind of have to wait till next month <laughs> for me to buy barbs of all things. Barbs, barbs and hoses. So I've got to buy some barbs. I've got to buy some hoses. I've got to buy some. Uh, Thread, uh, uh, threaded uh, long bolts so I can bolt the uh, fans which I have abundance of thanks to a friend of mine, Pete he uh, uh, restores Xbox 360s and things like that, he, he's a console guy but he has water blocked his uh, Xboxes from the Xbox One, the 360 and once his Xbox One goes out of warranty he's going to be water cooling it um, now a lot of people keep asking me what do I know about water cooling because I've never mentioned it during any of my streams so I'm going to put you back on the tripod here for a second. They ask me what do I know about water cooling and I tell them what I learned, I learned from someone who I consider a really good, knowledgeable and most importantly extremely close personal friend um, he has his own forums he has his own uh, uh, blog channel he actually does PC reviews for Bjorn 3d and I'll put a link to their website down below his name's dragon there on the Bjorn 3d uh, forums he literally showed me how to water call properly from the ground up me and him built ghetto water blocks using the stock original Intel coolers on the, the, the Celerons where it was just a copper block with an aluminum thin thing on it. Well, when you took the aluminum, aluminum or aluminium, as it likes to be called in England, take the top off, the copper was hollow. So what we would do is take plexiglass or even, even the jeweled CD case covers. Yes, that's how thin we would go. Uh, cut the tops, epoxy them on, no no O-rings here, we, we were proper ghetto, epoxy them on and then we would take these nylon barbs, I've got 
two of them on my radar here. We would take these nylon barbs because you could cut these without using a bandsaw or anything. And we would take these, we would just buy the, the, the coping saw blades. We wouldn't even buy the, the actual coping saw. You know, we were that ghetto. We were that cheap. We would just buy the blades, put it down in a uh, um, channel box, and we would cut the 45 degrees or whatever we needed to get it in. And then we would fit them into these plexi tops and, and, and water cool those. That would be my CPU cooler for an, a single core Celeron D, you know, that I paid like a thousand bucks for when it first came out. I know, I, I paid for whatever. But the point is, this here is a Swift Tech water block. Now, when this block first came out, the whole thing, or when it came out, the whole big thing about Swift Tech was they nickel coated a lot of their stuff to work with aluminum radiators and use the copper base. Now, problem with that is you get galvanic action, which is corrosion. Aluminum doesn't like copper. Copper doesn't like aluminum. But aluminum also, if the pH level in your fluid gets bad, doesn't like nickel. And what had happened was this was a complete copper and uh, nickel block. But what had happened was my fluid, and I didn't notice at the time when I first, again, I, I just used, you know, whatever fluid I could get for the cheapest at the time. I mean, at one point I was using Listerine as a biocide to clean out my uh, distilled water and things like that. Then I swapped over to using something completely different. I didn't even think about it. And, and, and bear in mind, I'm a mechanic, so I should have known this. But it, it didn't dawn on me. While I'm undoing this, I'm going to wander on for a bit. And so what I did was, because I didn't know what had happened was, as you can see, this is a well, very well used water book, I've got to clean it. But that's not the stock top. That's not a plexi top either. That is a two part epoxy top that I sand cast molded out of the original. And you can tell because I'll move into better light here real quick. Because it's still got the original ridges. Actually, as you can look carefully, you can still see the original ridges from where the original Swift Tech top was pushed into the sand. I sand casted this. It's an old method that uh, was used by mechanics for car parts that you couldn't get anymore, like Morgan and various other vintage cars. I learned that from my dad, and when I showed my friend Bucky that, he was like, so you do bring something new to the table. And yes, I went as ghetto as using an old marine pump. Here is my pump's head, as you can see, it's all rusted and crap from where I used to use it. I mean, I used to run this constantly. Uh, the pump head itself with the impeller is MIA right this second. And I even went as ghetto as to take this contraption, which was my reservoir and pump combo. And so I want to just show you something, okay? My pump would be in my res on here, and I'd even have fans blowing on my, my res to keep my heavily, heavily, heavily heavily overclocked uh, Q66 call and this is what it is by today's standards this could fit in here <laughs> so that should tell you something about the difference and again I would like to thank PC Calling for cutting me a really sweet deal no, I'm not being paid to promote them. I just generally feel their prices are priced very competitively. They're based in Amarillo, Texas, I believe. But if it's not, no, I don't think it's Amarillo, but they're in Texas. Houston, sorry, Houston. They're in Houston, Texas. And 
they are absolutely amazing and I have to give them insane props. Now, this is a Chinese knockoff of the uh, MS500 pump, so it doesn't have the very speed, but it still moves the exact same fluid as the D5, uh, sorry, as the MS500, uh, um, MS sorry. And you know what? When I ordered this, they sent me a plug for the top. This one's blue to match up my fluid. Now everyone's going, what's this magical fluid that you use that doesn't cause galvanic action? Ta-da! Peak windshield washer fluid with the ISA. That's it. It's got the alcohol in it to kill any bacteria, which actually lowers your temps again by another three degrees on top of whatever block radiator combo stuff you're using. And it is as cheap as a dollar for this jug, which is 3.78 liters or one US gallon for a gallon. Now, everyone's going, oh, no, 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 you should just, yeah, nice water. Ta da, got you covered. Got it here. I plan on not only doing a breakdown on what fluid is best, but I also plan, again, I've ordered me a block that's gonna cover both my editing rig and my gaming rig that you see here. My gaming rig is air-cooled, my editing rig is air-cooled. Now you're probably thinking, why am I using a Q66 with eight gigs of RAM to edit video with instead of my i7? Now, it's a good question. I'm doing it simply because it's the only thing I have. If I had another i7, I would have my i7 there, okay? But my i7 is a first generation. This was a review motherboard and a review CPU from my friend Dragon. He gave me a really sweet deal and I'm only rocking six gigs of RAM in this machine. Again, PC calling, big props to them. They said, talk to these other people uh, called Sun Micro on, you, uh, on eBay. So I looked them up and I'm going to be ordering me a 24 gig st stick set, which is, because uh, 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 my machine runs in triple channel, that's six sticks, okay? Grand total of 24 gigs, which is the max my motherboard can handle. My gaming motherboard, that is. It's the max it can handle. And I'm getting it for under $200. Now I looked on uh, Newegg, PC Part Picker, and all these other places, and they're quoting me, you know, 250, 300. It, one, one company even quoted me $1,000 and change, like $1,250. And I just looked at it and went, wah, wah, wah. no. Sun Micro has stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, no. We're gonna help you out. Of course, I'm going to be buying these products, but not until next month. Again, I am on a fixed income. So there is that, that's what I do have planned. As long as I get enough donations, that is, uh, uh, for that month. Again, I do this via donations and the majority uh, of my British uh, um, GI check that I get barely covers the bills in my house. Barely. Just, just barely. To the point where we now have a roommate living in my old office, which is why I'm now in this room, which used to be my daughter's bedroom. But she has now moved on to a different bedroom in the house. So, there is that. Hmm. So, Anja. It's Mountain Dew. Ah, game of fuel. And of course, behind me, you see War Thunder running on my TV. Not This used to be my gaming monitor. But I had to swap them around simply because the capture card I have ordered, which, not on wood, was supposed to be here today. It was supposed to be here Friday, but it was delaying customs because it's coming to me from China. Well, it's supposed to be here today, not on wood, you know, if not tomorrow. And it uses HDMI inputs only. And I, again, I don't even have a, a DVI to HDMI adapters or any of that funky crap. All I've got is just straightforward what you see. 
I mean, there's a 512 megabyte graphics card in my editing rig. Again, why? It's running off of my graphics card to edit. It's running off of my CPU and my RAM, which are both heavily overclocked. Well, RAM heavily overclocked, and the processor mildly overclocked. Um, in the editing rig, I'm using DDR2. I know it's a 775 setup. It's like six, no, almost four generations old now, but it's still viable, and it's rocking 120 gigabyte uh, laptop hard drive that I pulled out of a laptop that I bought at DI for like 20 bucks. They said it, they didn't know if it worked or not, and I'm like, eh, I can probably sell it on eBay for parts, which is what I do. And so I parted her out, sold the monitor and the keyboard and everything else to, to uh, the monitor. The, the display went to a guy in Ohio, the keyboard went to a guy in California, and the motherboard, I just, I sent off to a, sal a, a salvaging place where they scrap, scrap it for the gold and stuff. But um, the hard drive actually bloody worked. And it was 120, uh, 120 something gigs. So I threw it in my editing rig, and that's what my OS is on and stuff like that. I do have planned to get a one terabyte drive for it, uh, actually a couple. Um, because one drive is just going to be dedicated to recording my footage so I can do montages, stuff like that. And another one is dedicated to something completely different. The uh, GoPro knockoff, again, thank you China. The GoPro knockoff is hooked up to the editing, to the gaming rig, while my uh, 720 webcam is hooked up to my editing rig. So yeah, gaming, editing for two separate reasons. The editing rig, when I get it set up to record live, will be recording the uh, video input and everything else that the editing rig sees. But the editing rig cannot access my webcam, so I had to hook my webcam up to my editing rig, so I hope that makes sense. Granted, it's not gonna be super, super, super high def, but I, I am waiting on the prices to come down just a wee bit more on the Logitech C9, C, C920. Uh, webcam again that was uh, a webcam that uh, some other review some other streamers and whatnot told me is a really good webcam so I'm looking at getting that I'm also looking at getting a Yeti blue microphone uh, with the boom arm and the shock shock absorber stuff like that I'm still rocking the e uh, uh, the Cobra e blue uh, uh, pro e101 headset it's an amazing headset. Um, I've had no issues with it, you know, knock on wood. And that's my dog letting me know. I need to let him go outside. But, uh, yeah, everyone's like, well, what's been going on? Because I haven't been live streaming. This is what's been going on. I had to scratch build this table from scratch. Um, granted, it's a bit bowed. That's because the wood I used, I left that in my garage. Uh, and, well, I left it out there four years ago and the cold and whatnot has eventually warped the wood a little bit. But I'm fingering, hoping, hoping fingers crossed, I didn't knock on wood, <laughs> keep doing that, that the heat will start to straighten the wood again. Uh, it is cross braced with carriage bolts and various other things. So it's a, it's a sturdy table. It is a sturdy table. And I did this so that you guys can see some of the stuff I've got, you know, like my gaming stuff, like my headsets and, and uh, keyboard boxes and stuff like that, so you guys know that I really am a gamer. Uh, I'm not doing this, I'm not a poser or anything, because um, I'm not. I am a proper gamer. Um, everyone keeps asking me to do a tour of my office, so this is basically what this is, is a little tour of my office. So I'm going to take you off the tripod again, I know, I'm sorry. I'm going to take you off the tripod again, and so I'm going to do a small little quick go around. Yeah, so I'm going to flip that around. Up there, we've got the original vintage Kenner Darth Vader. Here, I'll uh, zoom in for you. Original vintage uh, Kenner circa 70s Darth Vader head with another Darth Vader figure and one of the Imperial Gunners. Over there, we've got uh, battle droids and stuff from the Clone Wars stuff. I'm not really into that era of toys. Of course, there's one of my airsoft guns. There's my other airsoft gun. Um, up there, more various Clone Wars stuff, uh, action figures that my wife bought me for Christmas, some Stormtroopers, of course, got to have the FET, more Stormtroopers, 
more storm. That's a you know they're, they're my uh, hot chocolate cups. One's a Darth Vader, the other one's a stormtrooper. Next to it, more stormtroopers and clone troopers, and my Sephiroth and my Hulk. Everyone keeps asking me, I, you know, oh, you don't really have that many stormtroopers. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, of course, up on the shelf, as I've shown before. Let me zoom out a little bit. That is, this is a small collection of some of the models I've done. Uh, yeah, mi mixtures of uh, German and American there. For some reason, my uh, camcorder keeps knocking the thing off at 20 minute mark. Uh, that is a work in progress of the Imperial Snowwalker diorama I'm doing. Ford pickup, one of my favorite pickups. Uh, Corsair, Tiger, uh, lit up Klingon D7 that I did for myself, and a lit up F8. Crusader, I did that myself, um, that is to pay my respects to my father-in-law who passed away, he was a, uh, uh, in the Navy, he actually flew um, that jet, uh, there's a Galaxy 500, there's a 49 Merc, um, but this is what most people want to see, they want to see my assimilated Enterprise, she's not finished, she's still a work in progress, she also lights up but she's unplugged right now. Another work in progress is the uh, Mirrored Universe uh, Star Trek model, and that is a TIE Fighter Hasbro uh, 2003 toy I'm turning into a static display. Up here is the original Cobra attack helicopter from G.I. Joe, with pilot and Cobra commander inside. There's a P-51 Mustang I'm building. Okay, here is a whole bunch of computer hardware stuff that uh, I've had forever. Uh, Saitec keyboard that's actually over there. As you can see, it's Saitec Eclipse. I'm rocking a uh, GeForce GTX 660 main gaming rig. Steel Series Apex keyboard. I'm going to be doing a review on that. It's a pretty heavy box. That'll be coming up next. That's the box for the E Cobras. Um, Cobra is actually going to be sending me a headset to give away. So, uh, of course, here's my uh, left handed Def Adder. Keyboard, a uh, mouse because I'm left-handed. So, uh, Steel Series Siberia Blue V2s. Um, there's the uh, Alua, uh, a Death at, uh, Alua Tarantula, whatever it's called, keyboard. Um, this is my camcorder I'm recording this on. It's a Samsung HMX F80. And underneath all this crap is another. Uh, that is the Razer. I want to say Widow. Is it the Razor Widow? I think it's the Razor Widow. No, Tarantula. That's the Razor Tarantula. And uh, of course, I've got a couple of sticks of uh, Root Jaw Ram that I've got to take a look at. And so, pretty much, that's a quick look at my really messy office. Uh, of course, I'm not finished. I'm still in the process of cleaning. Put back my tripod. And everyone keeps asking me about my seat, so I'm going to get it out of the way now. This is a actual proper Kirky racing seat, and I'll even prove it. It's a steel, heavy piece of crap. And this actually sat in my race car when I did circle track ages ago. Um, it actually saved my life. Um, this was the only thing I could salvage up my race car when I got into an accident. So you get all these posers that sit in these fake wannabe race chairs. I actually sit in a real race chair. And we know who some of those posers are, don't we? Nerdgasm. Just kidding, Bob, please. I love you. But um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, where I'm at, guys, right now. Um, I'm in the, I am in the process, again, as you can see behind me, of setting everything up so that uh, my stream is a lot more smoother, a lot more clearer, less issues, less everything else. And again, I do apologize for not streaming, but I am trying to get some more, as you, I mean, I'm doing it right now as we speak, I'm actually recording um, to get some footage up. And everyone's like, what's that? That's, uh, that's uh, one of my vices i'm watching uh, tna impact wrestling and everyone's like ew tna why not wcw or wwf there no the wwf is too story driven wcw's gone tna is 
Well, a lot of people, a lot of people like to say that TNA Impact Wrestling is where old wrestlers go to die. But you know what? I don't care. Bobby Roode just never wrestled in the WWF. Um, Austin Aries has never wrestled in the WWF. Um, they've got a lot of wrestlers in their roster that have never seen the inside of the ring of the WWF, and if they ever did, it would destroy the pieces of shit that they have in their ring right now. Um, but they're they're a good wrestling association. They're actually be coming here to Utah uh, September, I think they said. So that'd be fun. I'll actually be going to that. Um, of course, you're not allowed to take cameras or camcorders, but people do. They take their phones and stuff. So, oh, and everyone keeps asking me, what sort of phones do I have? What sort of phone do I have? I have this. I have the Samsung Galaxy S. This is my phone. She is technically a smartphone. Um, but she's not technically smarter than the average bear, you know what I mean? But anyway, guys, that was the quick and dirty, you know, and I'm not, I'm, I'm even going to leave this unedited. I'm just going to not even bother putting an intro or anything onto it. I'm just going to put these two clips together and done. So, um, with that in mind, I'm going to end this with a stay safe, have fun. Hope you enjoyed looking around my crap hole. <laughs> Keep your shows playing. Keep your enemies dying. Your Cobra Commander is out. Bye! Hornering around. Of course, the biggest weakness is the upper ma uh, uh, the upper uh, uh, chassis, with it only being 16 millimeters. So you've got to be careful of artillery, even light artillery will will wreck you. You have to be careful of HE as well, because HE will wreck you. Um, this isn't spaced armor, unfortunately. So don't give your opponents your sides if you if you can't you know if you can't help it. Same as the tar tarts, not really that strong, but it does have some sort of angling to it, 25 degree angling. So you know, unless you're going down the hill with 